Uh, will the librarian call roll, please? Certainly. Brayman. I see you. Hmm? Miller. Here. Sweeney. You can give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Miss Sweeney is here. Myers. Here. And Fristenau. Here. Uh, we have an agenda. You should have received the packet um, through email. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. We also have minutes from our January 18, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the January 18 minutes? So moved. I second it. Thank you, Mary Lou. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Uh, we have uh, scheduled comments from Kyle Cornelius. Is, oh, there you are. Thank you. Public Works Director Kyle Cornelius. Hello, greetings. Can everybody hear me okay? Make sure mm -hmm. I got yeah. Okay, I'll make sure I got the microphone nice and close. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, today, uh, I wanted to make a presentation uh, on the city's five-year capital planning document. Um, annually, I try to make it to each one of the boards and commissions uh, and make a presentation on, on the five-year CIP and to talk about just uh, capital planning and capital projects at the city and, and how, uh, how we plan for and execute uh, a lot of those projects. Um, my name is Kyle Cornelis. I'm the Public Works Director at the city. Um, I know some of you, for those I don't know, um, I've been here for about 11 years. Um, I was fortunate enough to get to work with some of uh, some of your coworkers and, and fellow boards and commission folks on the library expansion uh, when, uh, when we were able to secure a couple of grants and, and use uh, loans and city funds and um, substantially improve the, the library. That was a really fun project. Um, and it's a good example of, uh, of how uh, city infrastructure can grow and change uh, through the capital planning process. Um, the five-year CIP is a, a long-range planning document, like I said. Uh, it helps us uh, balance our, our capital needs, funding expectations, manpower, and resources in order to systematically uh, accomplish our, our capital projects. Um, as you can imagine, it would be, uh, it would be hard to... Uh, address street and road deficiencies and roof deficiencies and also be able to address, uh, you know, park uh, improvements or library needs, parking lot things. So it's, it's really a, a planning document. Um, an important distinction between the five-year CIP and the actual capital budget is that the projects identified in an a annual capital budget are targeted for funding and completion. Um, the primary mechanism, uh, one of the primary mechanisms to be uh, considered and put on the capital budget where council actually appropriates funds and, and accomplish those projects is to look at this five-year CIP and say, well, what have we planned to spend our money on? You know, how much and, and where at in the next five years have we identified that need and, and placed that, that project? So uh, that's an important distinction between the kind of the two capital uh, mechanisms at, at the city uh, to accomplish kind of infrastructure goals. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there uh, and feel free to answer, ask any questions or to interrupt me at any time if you got questions or, or afterwards to recap. Uh, it's a bit awkward with the Zoom thing. Um, so feel free to just speak up and, or, or raise your hand and, and Rachel might be able to see you as well. I'm happy to take questions at any time. I don't... Cheryl, I have a question. I don't know if you're going to go over each year in, in more detail, but uh, I was just really curious since it's FY 2021, what the resiliency projects involve. That's a huge amount of money this, this year for that. And uh, I know we've got a lot of money from CARES and 
so forth. But what kinds of things are included in that? Yeah, I will. And I will, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go through kind of each year so that you guys okay. can have a good understanding of, uh, a brief understanding of which each one of these projects are. And, and you know, feel free to interrupt and take, offer any, any comments or questions. Um, and then open it up for any, any questions, really. Um, and if there's no other questions, I'll start right there with that first one. So the, the, the COVID-19 resiliency projects is, is kind of the first one. And you'll, if you'll notice, uh, FY 2021 is a little bit different than some of the other years. And, and we put together the five-year CIP in the spring, typically, you know, in, spring, typically, you know. in advance of the uh, budgeting process. We're getting some feedback. Is that on our end? I'll move the mic just a touch away. So we knew that we were getting a substantial amount of funding through the CARES Act uh, to be used for a variety of different reasons at the city, uh, foremost to get it into the community through various grant programs. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of the city's track record and our ability to get those funds into people's hands that needed it, whether it was nonprofits, whether it was individuals, whether it was water and sewer uh, waivers, um, I think the city of Soldaton has done an amazing job of meeting those objectives of that, of that CARES Act grant. A portion of those funds are also available for resiliency projects, and um, those monies were spent on, on building upgrades, uh, were spilled, not, not big building upgrades, um, you know, hand sanitizer stations. A couple of good examples for the library board would be uh, some IT improvements with setting up uh, IT stations. We did Wi-Fi extenders so that people in the parking lot be able to get better Wi-Fi. Uh, the book kiosk uh, and, and the front entry was purchased using CARES funds on, through that allocation. Um, we purchased uh, some pipe and drape uh, facilities for uh, materials for our, our sports center facilities so that they could um, participate with the borough and, and provide services on a mass scale at the, at the sports center. Uh, we purchased a, uh, a restroom, kind of portable restroom shower trailer that will enable better sanitation in our parks, and hopefully we'll be able to use that this summer. Uh, if we can return to normal and get people to gather, we'll have facilities for that. So those type of reactionary um, COVID-19 type expenditures, th that kind of encompassed that first line item. And recognizing that, that uh, we would have uh, a lot of resources put into the pandemic, uh, that was a big number, and the following two, um, are, are, are kind of smaller, this, not, not necessarily in dollar figure, but uh, we just didn't have a lot of capital projects this year, knowing that we had a, a whole lot of little ones involving COVID. Um, and the storefront improvement program, the next one, that's an, an annual contribution to the storefront improvement grant program that the city participates in. Um, last time I checked with the planning department, I think that they had uh, funding available for, for one, maybe two more projects. Uh, and so what we do annually is we take a look at that fund balance and, and as, it's, as it's being utilized by um, businesses in, in the city, um, we replenish that fund to make sure that we have it on hand. It's been a, a pretty positive grant program. And then the, the last one in FY 2021 is, is that big uh, SRSC, Salatina Regional Sports Center Major Maintenance Projects. Um, this was a... This was a uh, a project that was meant to um, both modernize uh, the aging facility, but also make it more public friendly. Um, the sports center is the headquarters for the Parks and Rec Department. So um, if you go there, it's pretty intuitive to rent skates and go skating or play racquetball. But if you go there to rent the pavilion for a wedding or to um, talk about uh, uh, Centennial Park, it's, it's not. It's not very... Um, public friendly as far as the uh, atmosphere goes. So there's, it's, it's modernization and an upgrade of, of a building that, that really needs it, uh, painting the arena walls and replacing a ceiling, uh, remodeling an office, but it's also, um, we're gonna be putting in um, wayfinding signs and, and a better public counter and uh, improve the customer service aspect of the building. Any questions for 2021? Okay, um, and feel free to jump in and stop me if I'm going too fast. FY 2022, we've got uh, 
a couple of uh, transportation projects, the Redoubt Ave and Smith Way rehabilitation. Uh, this is a, an allocation we're, we're expecting and targeting uh, a quarter million as a local match uh, towards a grant project to improve Smith Way and Redoubt Avenue. Uh, this, is, this is the... Uh, This is the portion from, from Binkley uh, to the east, um, and it's, uh, it's, just, uh, it's got a lot of berry pits, and it just needs the, uh, the road to be re rebuilt uh, to include uh, sidewalks and other amenities. Downtown parking improvements. Uh, this is recognizing the need, ongoing need for um, parking facilities for uh, primarily um, our, our downtown area and, and Salatina Creek Park with the number of events and things that we have going on there. Um, so we've allocated 75000 just recognizing that that's kind of a ballpark figure of, of uh, funding that we may, uh, may need to consider in the next year. And then we've got a, a, a kind of a phase one of, of, a, of a project. You'll see in uh, 2023 there's phase two, the construction parts. We've broken out design and construction of a conference center uh, expansion and remodel. Um, the city, as you guys are probably aware, has contemplated uh, either a standalone conference center um, in, in discussions with the chamber and, and visitor center um, and or the remodel and expansion of our existing uh, conference center at the sports complex. And so this, this project anticipates uh, the design phase of that expansion and uh, pre-function and restroom area. Then we move down to FY 2023. Uh, again, the, we've got kind of a phase project, surface transportation, Marydale Avenue, phase one of two. We've, Marydale is, is also uh, an aging street, hasn't had a rehabilitation project in, in a lot of years. Um, it needs significant upgrades. We've broken into two projects simply for, because of a, uh, primarily because of the financial aspect, um, but also, you know, management and um, running a project of, of that size. And also, um, a burden to the traveling public and to, and to folks uh, traveling on Marydale. Uh, it's advantageous to, to break it into uh, into two phases. So we've got phase one, which is the Kenai Spur to Kobuk, and then uh, I think in the subsequent year we've got phase two, which is uh, Marydale from Kobuk to Sohai. Um, also incorporating um, large sidewalks either on one or both sides. Pedestrian accommodations is, is something that we've emphasized lately and, and tried to ensure that uh, our city is walkable and um, great for non-motorized transportation. Uh, Karen Street Park upgrades. Uh, this is a minor uh, improvement to the um, skate park area on, on Karen Street over by our water tank. Uh, pretty basic improvements. Um, the next one is the, the construction portion of the, uh, of the conference center that I spoke about. Um, you'll note that that's a, a $5 million targeted um, cost. Um, this is a good, good point for me to pause and, and remind folks that, at, you know, as a planning document, these, these projects aren't budgeted. Um, it, as, we, as we get later in the years, uh, they are also less precise and, and less well-defined. So in the earlier years, FY 2021, 22, 23, you know, we've, we've got a better understanding of their need. They're a, a higher priority. As we get older in the five years, they become, you know, less precise. And there are some projects, um, I think, and you'll see them later in the years, there are some projects that we include in this document that we may not intend to move forward with unless we achieve outside funding, for, you know, grant funding, um, uh, other, other outside funding that is necessary for, the project to move into the uh, into the next phase and, and get get on the capital budget, and and this is probably a good one. Uh, you know, five million dollars is is not something the city can easily write a check for, uh, and so it's it's on here as a planned project. Um, what isn't known at this point is the funding mechanism, um, how how we would go about doing that. Uh, there's a lot of different options and, and variables that could be considered um, as as a project gets near to. Uh, to the near term, uh, they can be, you know, uh, discussed at a higher higher level. Um, we can have work sessions. You know, council uh, council ultimately uh, approves the the five year CIP. Um, that's something I should back up and, and let you guys know as well. 
the administration works with all the department heads and in public meetings such as this to discuss the five-year CIP and and then eventually to develop a proposed CIP that um, gets put in front of council for their input, um, both informally and formally, you know, through work sessions and public meetings, and then ultimately voted on through a resolution for adoption by the by the council. So um, it's kind of a long and twisty road um, with lots of um, opportunity for input and, and, and change, but. So that's a fun project, uh, expensive, but, uh, but fun and has, um, has been identified on the FY 2023 CIP. Uh, the next project, trail and pedestrian improvements. Uh, this was identified as a need on the recreation and trails master plan, involves non-motorized trail and sidewalk infrastructure. Uh, it's an allocation um, recognizing our dedication to improve and accommodate pedestrian and trails in the city. Um, moving into FY 2024, the Centennial Campground Road Paving, um, 750,000. This has been a long time project. Um, I'm pretty sure that Scotty would buy me a, a small boat if I were able to pave that street for the maintenance department. They spend a considerable amount of time and energy, um, particularly if it's a wet year, uh, maintaining Centennial Park Road and its gravel state and, and kind of subpar um, base. This project would envision you know, paving the main, the main drag. It would improve the user experience significantly for our park uh, folks and it would reduce operating costs to the city. So it's kind of a win-win. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a high dollar amount. And we're talking about asphalt, um, things don't come cheap. So it's, it's identified as a need, but as I noted earlier, it's kind of out there, right? FY 2024, um, I have applied for grants uh, unsuccessfully in the past for this and will continue to do so. Next, we'll see that companion project to the Marydale, project, uh, Marydale Ave reconstruction uh, from, Co from Cobuck to Sohai. Again, uh, taking into account some some better sidewalks. Finally, we've got the last year in, in the five-year CIP, and, and we've had projects that have languished here for, for several years, many years. Um, I'll, 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 I'll mention the uh, pedestrian bridge over the Kenai River. It's been, a, uh, it, it's been a topic of discussion at each one of my stops with the boards and commissions. It, it used to be on our five-year CIP a number of years ago, and then it was removed um, just because of the uh, complexity and, and, and price tag. Um, but there's been uh, a really positive reaction by folks on, on boards and commissions about that pedestrian bridge over the, uh, over the Kenai River. Uh, it excites me for the pedestrian aspect, but also the ability to link our utility systems, um, particularly our water system. But it's not on here, but it is a, it, it's indicative of the fact that sometimes, again, we have projects out here way out in the five-year CIP. We say, hey, this is a... This is a need and a, and a priority and a want of the city, but it's way out there and, and it may take outside funding to, uh, uh, to see it accomplished. Uh, South Fireweed Avenue, the first one, is a good example. Um, and, and this is probably a low estimate at this point at 2.5 million. It would be awesome to have a new collector street um, in the existing right of way for Fireweed. As you all know, Fireweed terminates there on readout and the opportunity to extend that would uh, be great for utilities. It would um, it would uh, increase and make available um, single family re and and uh, uh, res rural residential um, parcels that that we're short on in the city as it is. A lot of good reasons to to extend fireweed. Unfortunately, uh, it's not cheap to build a, a street anymore, and and so we we would need significant funding in order to accomplish that. But it would it would make a big difference um, for our, for our community. Unfortunately, it it, it is. Uh, a kind of a grant dependent project, um, as is the maintenance worm storage facility at 900,000. Uh, this would, in, would construct a, a worm storage facility for our equipment. You know, right now we've got a, a number of equipment that sits outside all year. Um, in the winter, it's pretty hard on equipment. We got to start it early, and let it run. Um, you know, this would, this would provide a home for our equipment. Um, it, it would, it would last a lot longer and, and they would be, uh, a good amenity for the for the maintenance department, and then finally, the last one is a mechanic shop at Arbor Avenue. Our our administrative offices for the 
maintenance department uh, are off of Arbor Avenue. Um, when it was constructed, the anticipation was that we would have uh, both the heavy heavy fleet and mechanics over there at some point. So it's it's designed and, and um, available for expansion. Uh, we just haven't. And so out at our Funny River shop um, is where we have the mechanics and, and heavy fleet equipment. Um, this would consolidate you know, our maintenance efforts in, in kind of one core area in the, in the center of town. Um, but like I said, it's, it's out there a ways. It's, it's uh, estimated to cost $2 million. It's not something that, that we're ready to embark on right now. We continue to look for grant opportunities to fund that project. We do recognize the need. Um, and that concludes most of the general fund, uh, the general fund five-year CIP. Um, I won't go into detail on each one of the next projects because I'll probably be the only one really excited about them, uh, like sewer lift stations and other fun, fun things. Um, but we do uh, very closely, uh, very keenly segregate our funding sources. Um, the airport fund is, is um, you know, by itself, standalone. The general fund, here we see the utility fund, um, you know, the users uh, c that contribute. The, the users of the utility fund are also the ones that contribute to it, not, not the general fund. So that's why we separate some of the utility-related infrastructure chain, uh, projects and, and CIP is because they're, they're funded separately. It's important to identify them for the same planning purposes and for the same reasons uh, I noted earlier, um, making sure that we can accomplish any number of projects in a, any given year and that we're systematically planning for, you know, the upgrades and, and, um, and the needs that, that, we, that we know are out there. You know, we don't want to have five streets and a lift station and a roof all die at the same time. We want to be, want to be proactive. So um, the, the one thing we do try to link between the, the two funds is, um, you know, street projects. Anytime we've got uh, subsurface infrastructure, you know, the last thing we want to do is invest in, in street projects and then two years later need to dig it up to replace a valve or work on a lift station or anything of that nature. So there, you'll, you'll notice some similarities um, in the street projects where we're, we're doing um, underground utility work at the, at the same time to make sure that we're not being terribly inefficient. Um, last thing I'll talk about real quick is just kind of timing. Um, the, uh, the five-year CIP, like I mentioned, is developed in the spring. It's something that, that we update and then is, is helpful for uh, the development of our capital budget. Uh, in the last couple of years, what we have done is we've made year one of the five-year CIP, the actual capital budget, and, and addressed them at the same time. Um, the operating budget is, is adopted um, in July. The, the fiscal year starts July 1. So uh, the five-year CIP is done a little bit, you know, a little bit earlier, and then the capital budget is, is thereafter. So um, I'm happy to say and go over all kinds of any questions now, later. Um, my door is always open, uh, I guess, if the, <laughs> depending on the rules. But my phone and email is always open. Um, <laughs> everybody's, uh, I'm, I'm always happy to, to talk about city projects, um, ones that are on, on the CIP, ones that aren't. Um, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to entertain any, any questions or comments now or in the future. So don't, don't, um, don't worry about reaching out. Feel free to, to call or email anytime. Any, any questions, any burning questions on, on these fun projects? Uh, Kyle, I'm interested. Do you foresee any maintenance projects on, for example, um, the library Grounds, the parking areas. Uh, how how is all how, how are our library holding up? Good question. Um, I think the library is holding up great. I think we've had some growing pains, and and like any you know major commercial expansion of a of an old facility, you know there's been some hiccups and things that we've needed to address. Um, but I've been pretty pleased with with the result, and um, I think if I remember correctly, we spent about six point eight million. Uh, on the expansion, and then we followed up and did the the basement remodel a number of years later, and, and um, invested in, in the basement. Um, I don't I don't foresee anything right now as far as uh, as far as I'm aware of. I think that um, you know 
there's I should I should talk real briefly about the opportunity to address capital needs um, not through the CIP or a capital budget um, each year when um, the city develops its operating budget there's there's an opportunity to take care of small capital needs and that's a discussion that happens at the administrative level and, and involves you know the department head city manager um, the finance director and myself you know where we'll we'll identify those needs and and then decide whether or not it's a major capital project or if it's something that can be incorporated into the operating budget uh, there's not a hard fast dollar amount it really depends on the type of project and the complexity um, I will say that that typically they're you know they're they're you know 30 40 thousand might be getting in the in the high end of the range um, but if it's if it's something like you know new carpeting in an area or um, shelving or equipment you know there could be a, a lot of that kind of stuff can be incorporated into the operating budget and is a line item that is taken care of under contracted services and and so the the capital budget side of things usually you know usually they're a bigger expenditure results in a you know a one-time expenditure results in a, in a in a fixed asset and is usually larger and more complex so the small stuff, you know, Rachel's got that opportunity to, mm -hmm. to work with the administration to propose, you know, those small capital projects for consideration by the council under the operating budget. For the bigger stuff, I don't really foresee anything right now. At one point, we did, we did have a parking lot expansion uh, project mm -hmm. that we had identified had, and had, I think, included on the five-year CIP. Uh, if I recall, that was primarily due to some growing pains with the hospital uh, I think they were moving into the Spine Center next door. There was some construction going on. The Mundell building also had some work. And, and so um, I think some outreach helped in communication. And as far as I know, some of that has been alleviated. Um, there's always the ongoing debate, and it's not easy, about you know, do you, how do you accommodate the one or two times a year where you're under capacity? And, and you know, do you have the sea of asphalt so that you you can always meet that capacity 100% of the time, you know, or do you try to mitigate those couple of events of the year where you where you don't, whether that's reaching out to neighbors or on street parking and things of that nature. Um, but I do know there was a, there was an issue at, at one point, but as far as I know, that's been largely resolved, and so there isn't there isn't anything big on my radar at at, at this point, um, Jane. I'm happy to I'm happy mm -hmm. to hear any any ideas if you guys if you guys have any you know a new wing or uh, <laughs> anything fun like that. Yeah, I'm I'm sure Rachel will be drafting up the proposal. <laughs> Perfect. <That> sounds good. <laughs> she can be convincing. Does anyone else have questions for Kyle in his presentation? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And, and always feel free to reach out if you've got questions, even past, present, or future. You know, uh, I've been here long enough that I have seen some work done at, at the library and spent enough time on the roof and elsewhere that, um, you know, or, or anything, for that, Nate, anything for that matter at all at the city. Um, you know, uh, I get folks that, that, uh, that come to me that say, gosh, I, I feel bad um, about this, po you know, about reporting this and, I don't want to. I don't want to gripe about this pothole, but I always remind people that, you know, we, you know, we can't take care of something if we don't know about it. And so, um, if there's if there's any, you know, public works kind of stuff that's going on at the city, feel free to reach out and let me know, and we'll do our best to take care of it. Okay, we will move on to uh, new business on the agenda. The rec recommending approval of the updated circulation policy. And first we will need a motion to recommend approval of the updated circulation policy. Could I have a motion please? I move that we uh, approve the uh, 
recommended changes in the uh, policy. Could I, I second? I second that. Thank you, Mary Lou. Uh, report from the librarian. Yes. So if you want to turn to page 10 in our packet, uh, just some very brief updates. Um, so the first one is in here it said patrons with expired cards must provide photo identification and proof of address to renew their permanent borrowing privileges. I wrote that this is not necessary if their address hasn't changed. And I think on the very last page of the policy, it talks about if your address has changed, then uh, you will need to provide proof of address. But if their address has not changed, there should not be a reason to provide that proof every three years. And then uh, the other one is, it used to say to check out items, patrons must provide a valid library card or photo ID uh, to check. Yes, and I just switched that around. Uh, and so instead of saying the library card itself, because many of our patrons have their number memorized or they have it available on their mobile devices, I am proposing that we change this to just provide a valid library card number. And we did go back and forth on this because we said we still want to make sure to protect their confidentiality. The truth is, if somebody has uh, the card number, they can access all the information. They could use the self-checkout system. So uh, it's more of a barrier to access, to in-person access, if we say, well, you have the card number, but you don't have the card. So just making that clear. Um, so like I said, just two really really small changes, trying to make sure that we stay up to date and consistent. And for years, we have allowed patrons to call in, give us their library card number, and then you know we'll let them know if their hold is in or whatnot. So this is really just making it consistent. Uh, Rachel, how much information can a person get um, over the phone with their, just reading their library card number off? They can get all the information on their account. I mean, we don't generally tell them their own address because that would be suspicious. But if they're calling and asking, you know, when are my items due? I have a hold. Uh, there is this book that I wanted to get the next one in the series. You know, those kind of questions are the ones we typically field. And certainly when we were close to curbside only, that was really important that we were able to do that. But of course, we want to make sure that we're protecting their confidentiality so that that card number is really their their ticket to all the information. Mm -hmm. So I just I, so the card number wouldn't appear on any printouts, for example, if they um, put a hold on a book or checked out a book. They are there slips that would give that number that might be not on their hold slip. So for instance, the one that goes into the book, it does appear on our staff only hold slips and it does appear on their receipt. But in order to get a receipt, they would first have to provide the library card number to check it out. So that's one of those things. We can take it off, but most people prefer to have it on there, I think. Okay, thank you. Good questions, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if those are all the comments. Um, oh, for those participating through Zoom, please raise your hand if you would like to comment. App users by pressing the raise your hand button and phone participants by dialing star nine on your telephone. And if you're on Zoom, if you look at the bottom strip of your screen, there is the raise hand button. Mm -hmm. And I, I see no see raised that. hands. I don't see that. All right. Well, there's, That's... A, there's a small enough number of us that we're all on the same screen. So I think we're, I think we're good. So if there... Um, Madam uh, Chair. Yes. I would just mention that on mine, up at the top, it ends with three dots. And if you go to the three dots, it's settings, raise hand, or disconnect. And so it might be that someone who doesn't have it on the bottom, it's up at the top, far right, three dots, middle one, raise hand. Oh, thank you very much. I forgot that welcome. I recently, I was prompted to update my Zoom display. 
so I so I guess depending on which version you're on, you get yes. uh, different menu items. Uh, the subject is open to discussion. Um, I'm not hearing any comments. So if there's no further discussion, I'd like to call for the vote. Brayman? Yes. Miller? Oh, hold on, let me see. Cheryl, I'm sending an ask to unmute message, hoping that helps. Rachel, are you able to unmute her? I can I ask to unmute. I can't actually unmute her, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Cheryl. Um, I, I don't know if this works, but if you could give me a thumbs up if you vote yes or a thumbs down for no. <laughs> it's very official. Thank you. Sorry. Sweeney. Yes. Myers. Did you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Oh, Myers. Perfect. Thank you. Mary Lou? Yes. And first to now. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll now move on to reports. Uh, if we could have the librarian report, please. Yes, certainly. All right. So a lot changed since last time we met. Uh, we opened back up for grab and go services, which was where we were. Uh, requesting patrons to stay a shorter amount of time. And we do now require masks to be worn over the nose and mouth at all time. We have uh, adult masks and children's masks available in the front entrance. And uh, we still have our meeting spaces closed. Staff are still using them for their own workspaces. And uh, then we also, even today, are offering curbside services if people request it. We did get our tax forms and PFD forms, so that's a busy time of year for us. Unfortunately, our AARP volunteers were not able to help in January. They were able to start helping on March 4th. Uh, so we were able to refer some patrons to Anchorage, but of course that's far away, so we did our best. But we we're very glad when they were able to provide those services. And uh, we also shortened our story times. Um, it's really difficult to stay in front of a screen for a long time, especially for little ones. And uh, this seems like a little thing, but we had not been accepting cash, and we began accepting cash again, which was a big deal for us. Uh, in February, we submitted our budget for the next two fiscal years, FY22 and 23, and we recommended restoring funding for training, materials, office supplies, and library staff, including our regular part-time clerk one position. And we also requested an increase in our book budget, which we have not done for a while. Uh, but the specific reason for the increase is to purchase more ebooks. Our circulation, when we first started using it in FY 2014, was about 3,661 ebooks. And in FY 2020, it was 23,046 ebooks. So quite a big jump. Mm -hmm. And yet our budget hasn't increased for that. So that's what we're asking for. And then we also added in some of those uh, projects that Kyle mentioned, our holds locker, our kick scanner, uh, self-checkout, and curbside app. They have ongoing maintenance costs. And so we added those in. We purchased a tripod. I know some of these seem little, but this really, really helped our staff when they were filming story times and um, programming. And then also we did start just discuss reopening our community room. I probably should just say we're always discussing that, uh, but I learned that all of our programs are filmed in that room. And so at, at that point, we still did not open back up. And uh, in March, uh, we talked about AARP already. So the Soldotna Library Friends approved $2,500 to build a story walk in the Soldotna Creek Park. And it'll be 20 signs with uh, disassembled picture books. And in fact, if you want to see an example, you can go to the Kenai Trail, uh, the Kenai Wildlife Refuge just put one up as well. So they beat us to it, but we're super excited to see this. It's a great way of encouraging literacy and also um, just encouraging kids to move outside. 
And uh, we also up updated our online card application. This is something that I think might be interesting too. We've always had paper forms and we still do, but during the pandemic, we had to have a way for patrons to register for cards. And so we had this online form, which we talked about our, during our last meeting. And that is the way patrons prefer to register. We always offer both options, the online or the paper, and they prefer the online for the most part, which I think is really good because then they get their information right. Uh, there's no you know, duplication of efforts when staff are trying to type in what they already wrote and maybe misspelling it. Um, typos happen. So that's interesting to me. And then we did stop Zoom story times in March. We just didn't have the attendance, but we're continuing to offer our Facebook Live story times. And I will say that our uh, children's services staff have just done an amazing job continuing to keep that energy. So technology-wise, we talked about our holds lockers. They came in on the 30th of December, and then we set them up uh, the week of January 15th. Kind of on a trial basis, there's this thing called a pseudo branch, which you know, I did not know about previously, but it essentially makes it so that when a patron places a hold on an item, they can choose to either pick it up from the holds locker, which is that pseudo branch of the library, or they can just select Soldatna Public Library and pick it up inside. And so on the 26th, the pseudo branch was finalized and uh, we were just waiting on uh, Circe Dynex, which is our uh, catalog systems vendor to, to set that up. And so now patrons are able to just select whichever location they prefer. And we've had a lot of positive feedback about those. People like the fact that they can, um, whether for convenience sake, just grab it and go, or if you know they really can't make it to the library during our open hours, they're still able to pick up materials. Um, we did have some issues with our public access stations. Uh, Userful is our vendor for those, but IT was able to sort it out. We're very grateful for them. And also our RFID scanners, those are our radio frequency scanners, uh, but Brianna was able to fix that. So just, you know, the, the ins and outs of IT. And then our, our kick scanner, our brand new kick scanner has had freezing issues. It seems to be once a month <laughs> and uh, they're still trying to pinpoint that. I will say that although we're not happy about the freezing issues, the vendor is very good to work with and they jump right on it and so they're they're continuing to work on that. And I think we've been okay so far for the month of April. Uh, and then we also got a new BizHub copy machine. I should say new to us. It came from another city department. Our patron printer was, uh, it was guzzling toner. So <laughs> we decided to go to with a BizHub, which then has a contract and it'll be much lower in terms of toner costs. Um, and yeah, like I said, the kick scanner has issues. So staffing, we were finally able to uh, fill, we had a, an open on-call clerk position and two on-call page positions. The two on-call page positions had been open since I believe last March or J July. It was quite a while. <laughs> and then the on-call clerk position had been open since November uh, or early December. So we hired Joe Nutter as an on-call clerk. She started on February 3rd, 2021. And Cactus Maloney and Athalia Quiner were hired as on-call pages on February 4th, 2021. So we did a lot of training in those weeks. Uh, it was a lot of new hires all at once. And then Cactus did resign on March 13th for personal reasons. I do uh, really highly recommend you stop by and meet our other two new hires, though. We, I like to introduce them to people, and they've been um, doing great. It feels, I try to remember how long ago that was, and it feels like they've been there a year already. So that's a good thing. And then just a few collection management things. We talked about those STEM kits last time, I believe, but we were able to get them all cataloged very quickly and circulating in January. And they are very popular. I can also show you where those live if you come in. There's almost, uh, I, I walk past them frequently during the day and I'm always checking to see how many there are. And there might be say 10 on the shelf in the morning and by the afternoon there's only four left. So they come in and they go right back out, which is exactly what you wanna see. Uh, and I think that our homeschool families and our virtual learning families and all of our families are really enjoying them. And then our JP relabeling project is continuing and those seem to also be helping patrons find things. We also swapped our YA nonfiction, YA new books. We just switched where they were to try to help uh, both to circulate better. And then we also continued weeding our adult nonfiction section, which is a long-term project. 
So a few problems. We do have patrons that forget to wear a mask and staff are constantly reminding patrons to wear masks correctly. And we did have several incidents where, uh, where patrons did not want to wear masks and they were pretty verbally abusive to library staff. So far, it hasn't been anything uh, we couldn't handle, but just thought you should know that that's happening. And I will also say that all library staff have been doing a really amazing job. Uh, they're providing exceptional customer service during what's a difficult time for all of us. They have just stuck to their training. They're calm. They empathize. They uh, offer all of the accommodations they can and just try to really, they just try to be friendly and they do a great job of doing that. And we are offering curbside services still, like I said, or using our hold lockers for patrons that really just can't wear a mask or won't wear one. And then um, if so, they can, they can come in. So, And then summer reading, uh, we ordered our supplies. We were very excited to do that. And also staff began contacting our partners. We are tentatively planning to offer small in-person programs for adults in June and outdoor in-person programs for children in July. Of course, we're, it's all depending on the CDC guidelines and all of those fun things that the fun vocabulary we've learned over the last year. So we're going to just uh, continue to put safety first. We do think that we'll be able to possibly get a grant from the state library that will help us provide really, really good outdoor story times uh, this summer and in the future. And then the last section, travel and training. We Trained in all our new hires, there's a lot for them to learn. Safety, circulation, shelving, and customer service. We continued our self-directed achievement program. This includes weekly training and mentoring sessions for all regular staff. I think that's been especially important during these times, and I've been really glad to see staff take that and branch out on uh, topics that really help them to provide better customer service, better programming, readers advisory, and all of that, and uh, better safety training. So... And then also, these are, this is just kind of a brief summary. Staff completed training on Zoom, video editing, management, customer service, service animals, unattended children, teen services, communication, Excel, reference and readers advisory, library statistics, and digital security. And myself, Leslie, and Rayanna also were able to attend the Alaska Library Association virtual conference from March 18th to 20th, 2021. And then mostly, I'll, I just let you look at these, but as is to be expected, our uh, visitation is down from past months, but uh, it is getting a little higher. I would expect April to be, um, I, I don't know exactly where it'll be, but it should be higher than March. <laughs> and uh, physical checkouts. And you notice, and I think I mentioned this a couple months back, but although we're not having as many visitors, people are still checking out books, I guess, maybe more than you would expect, despite not being able to come into the building. So that's been really good to see. And uh, of course, also ebooks, but those physical checkouts. So people are checking out more items when they come in uh, than before. And our programs have, there are fewer programs. And so we have um, a little bit less attendance, although we are starting to get into, as you can see, the 2020 numbers for March. That was when we first shut down a year ago. Uh, so you can see the trends. And then the rest of those, I'll, I'll let you kind of peruse. And at this time, if anyone has any questions, either about my report or about anything you're interested in, please let me know. So, Rachel, I'm curious, what do we have um, for patron policies that would cover um, harassment of staff? Um, I, I know we don't have a policy that deals specifically with masks. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So uh, our patron conduct policy, that would definitely cover that. But like I said, so far it has not, it has not escalated to the point where we felt the need to uh, resort to other measures. <laughs> so, uh, but I do think it's important that you know that on occasion, the staff are dealing with some very difficult situations. Hey, Rachel, I would like to um, kind of comment on the summer reading program. Sure. You had mentioned um, making contact with your partners. I'm not sure what that referred to exactly. Um, 
But once again, whoever is in charge of it at the library, if they could really make sure to reach out to the schools. Um, I was very impressed with what the schools were able to do last year at this time. In spite of not being in session, how they really tried to encourage and put out materials and encourage the summer reading and actually had quite a successful turnout with doing it all, like pick it up at the school, do it through Zoom, do it through all the um, various ways that they could. But this year they are in session and I don't believe they are still holding any type of a big kickoff assemblies in the spring, but they are definitely putting out the materials to all the students in the school and anything that the library can add to that, I think would be beneficial to both the schools and the library. Thank you. Yes, and I agree. Um, as a parent of one of those children that was sent home last March, the schools did an amazing <laughs> job. Uh, and in fact, last year, Leslie, I believe, was able to do, I don't know if she did one or two um, sort of Zoom field trips. It, it wasn't the same, of course, but just to kind of promote mm -hmm. summer reading. Uh, this year, she has been talking to a couple schools and like you said, they're just not sure about the assemblies, if that's going to happen. If they have right. an assembly, it sounds like she would be able to attend and promote summer reading. Uh, every year we do have little flyers that we hand out um, or we give to the schools. So we are, I believe, waiting on permission from the school district because there's the little uh, disclaimer we put on right. them. So right. as soon as that comes Ask back, they'll at least get central those. Central office first. Yeah, so thank you for reminding us about that. But yeah, um, we're going to do what we can. I think Leslie also asked if she could go into individual classrooms, but so far I don't oh. think that that has, I don't know if that's going to happen either, which is totally understandable considering the circumstances. So right. yeah, thank you though. Yeah, and like I said, I, I can't say enough good about Leslie and Linda. Uh, there are two core uh, youth services librarians. They just do a great job. So um, and we're always happy if you have ideas of other people we can reach out to. Oh, and you mentioned partners. So we like to have outside groups come in and help us do our programming for summer reading. So we've partnered with the Kenai Wildlife Refuge. Michelle, Ranger Michelle's come out every year. And actually what we're mm -hmm. planning for that this year, uh, the Sea Life Center, we believe, is going to be able to do a Zoom field trip. For us, I think that's going to be our kickoff. And then Ranger Michelle, we're going to do an actual kind of field trip, if all goes as planned, where Leslie will go to the refuge and be with Michelle and film Michelle. And so sort of a kind of, you know, like a field trip, but virtual, because um, they're not able to come in person yet. So that's what we have planned now. We're trying to just stay, I think nimble is the word since things could change <laughs> at the last minute. Um, but we're Very excited. Nice. Our, our theme is tales and tales. So animal tales, oh. stories. And I have been told that kites also have tails and rockets have tails. A lot of things have tails. Mm. So <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be fun. <laughs> Any other questions? I could go on and on, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. And um, we'll move to reports. Uh, do we have a representative from the Soldatna Library Friends? I, okay. We do right. not. We do not? Yeah, not currently. Okay. okay, all right, thank you. But they're doing and, great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the city manager is not on the line either. Uh, public comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment? For those participating through Zoom, please raise your hand if you would like to comment. App users by pressing the raise your hand button and phone participants by dialing star nine on your telephone. I see none. We have no members of the public. Okay. 
uh, we will move to uh, council comments. And I'd like to start with ex officio council member, uh, Kerry. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I am always so very impressed with these meetings reflecting on the work that's being done, on the services being provided. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. I just uh, greatly enjoy just listening. Um, Rachel's reports are just so good in terms of all the things. Technology, some people were concerned that technology would overwhelm a library. Um, instead, technology is allowing the library to boom even more and bloom better. And just listening to the different uses uh, of these services to allow people to have access. It's just wonderful. I just want to say thank you to everyone. And I look forward also to meeting the uh, new members that Rachel mentioned, uh, the new employees. Thank you. Okay, uh, Gloria Sweeney. Yes. Um, I just want to comment too, carrying on after Dave, that, and even at looking at the reports, that the increase of library use in spite of all of this going on has been very impressive. And that's a testimony to all the various efforts put out there to keep people in touch with what's happening at the library and knowing that they have total access in spite of everything. I appreciate that, Rachel. Thank you. Edward? Um, I just would echo the comments of the previous people and would also say I've been in a, a, only a couple of times, but uh, it's been a very pleasant experience and your staff is just doing an incredible job under very difficult uh, circumstances. And lastly, I hope that the next meeting we have is <laughs> not on Zoom, but face to face. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Cheryl, are you able to unmute your mic? Not yet. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we've lost your comments. Uh, Mary Lou? Hi, sorry about the camera and not seeing even a Zoom face to face. <laughs> but I would like, first of all, to say I experienced the hold lockers. And that that was a very pleasant experience for me. And all I could think of were those people who were not able to get to the library to pick up the books were not were now able to. So that was a very positive uh, aspect that the library provides the public. The other thing is I'm thinking um, of the collection of the Soldatna Library. During the COVID, I have been taking many webinars on writing books, it's specifically picture books. And the collection that is at the Soldatna Library, many of them that I needed to review were at our library. Thank you very much, Rachel, and whoever does that collection selection. Um, it's a wonderful job, and it was so nice, especially with the new labeling that's available if I was doing a specific subject area. So thank you. Thanks. Yes, uh, thank you, Rachel, and I hope you'll pass our comments on to your staff. I do go into the library frequently to drop off and pick up books. And uh, sometimes I forget that you're still under those COVID restrictions because although everyone's wearing masks, um, it looks pretty busy in there. And frequently I do have to uh, stand in line uh, to make uh, transactions. Okay, well, that concludes our board member comments. Um, I just wanted to check regular meeting. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to check that Mayor Whitney didn't want to say anything. Did you have any comments? Oh, a few. I'll keep them brief, though. Okay. Um, sorry, Jane. I didn't mean to interrupt. Just wanted to make sure. I just want to thank everyone for serving. It's one of the most important committees that uh, we have. Uh, the public library. I know when I was a kid, I spent half my summers in the library reading and taking books out. Uh, I still read a lot. Um, 
Matter of fact, uh, unfortunately, I don't get into the library much, but I read a lot. Um, I may be banned from the bookstore because I went in there last week, bought a book, got home, looked on the shelf, I've got it on the shelf. So I asked him if I could exchange it. <laughs> so I, exchanged it. I got home with a second book and looked on the shelf. I've already got it. <laughs> exchanged it the third time. And I said, if I've got this one on the shelf, I won't come back. I'll give the book away to somebody. <laughs> I, I personally have a lot of books. I uh, just got back from vacation. I usually read a book a day while I'm on vacation. So what you do down there is uh, fantastic. Um, the community loves it. Um, you just tell by the numbers and the people that use it. Uh, right. The ones that um, are from out of the area. So thank you again. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor Whitney. Okay, hey, the next regular meeting I'm of the Full Dot the Library Advisory Board will be held on July 19th at 5.15 p.m. Meetings will be conducted remotely through Zoom webinars um, during COVID-19 high alert levels for the Central Peninsula. And let's all cross our fingers that um, our numbers will go down and that we can be in the same room uh, our, at our next meeting. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, Cheryl made the motion. And uh, could second. I have a second? Oh, thank you, Ed. I second. Uh, all right, well, I will see you in July, one way or the other. <laughs> thank you all for your time. We'll see you later. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.